is Kyle O'Quinn. I'm very fortunate to say I played for the Orlando Magic. I played right here at Norfolk State University in the state of Virginia, about two, two hours away. Um, some of you guys may know, some of you guys may not know, but I was a part of the upset 2012 when Norfolk State beat Missouri. So that was very big in my basketball career, but that's the end of my college career. That was the end of my story. It started way before that, way before that. When I say way before that, I mean way before that. I had to train all the time, every day. I wasn't as old as you guys when I started. I started in 11th grade. Started playing basketball in 11th grade and when I finally got my chance to play, I blew it. Wide open layup, I threw it off the backboard. I like the worst kid in the gym. That's when I had to make my decision. What was I gonna do? Was I gonna be the kid that just tried to get by by luck, being tall? Or was I gonna be that kid that trained hard and tried to beat other kids out for the same spot they was trying to get? Fortunately enough, my parents, they, they helped me out. They put me in a training facility. They got me with a guy, I matched up with him. I worked out with him three times a day before my senior year of high school. When I say three times a day, we went three times a day. We went in the morning, we went around noon time, we did conditioning, and at, and at night, all we did was basic stuff, learning how to catch the ball, footwork and things like that, because I had to prepare for a senior season, not only not knowing what it may turn out to be, just to make my parents happy, just to be satisfied that I worked hard to get to this point. It's a privilege to play varsity basketball, and I wanted to do that. I didn't know how far it could take me, but I knew that the time that I put in the gym, it would pay off at some point. Okay, fast forward a little bit. Into my senior year, I had a great year. I ended up averaging 20 points, 12 rebounds. Still, I wasn't good enough. Everybody thought it was a fluke. Nobody thought it was real. Everybody said, oh, maybe the competition's too low. Where was he before? How come he never played before? What's this kid's story? I never got a scholarship offer until the last chance that a school could offer me. And to be quite honest, they didn't come to give me the scholarship. They came to get the point guard, but I, the, the bell had rang. They came to get the point guard, the bell had rang, we were switching classes. My size matched up to the same size that they saw in the film. They said, this kid must be real. We saw him move. He's six foot nine, six foot ten, he can move like that. Let's give him an honest shot. They came to my house that evening. They gave me a media guide. I said, can I come to the school today? They said, no, nah, it's too early. I'll come next week. They offered me a scholarship as soon as I got to Norfolk State that week. So that scholarship wasn't offered when I got to that school. That scholarship was offered when I missed that layup. When I blew my chance my junior year, when I embarrassed myself in front of the whole school and made a decision that I wanted to train as hard as I could just to be satisfied with myself and make my parents happy, not let them feel like they wasted their money. Fast forward. So first freshman year, it was, it was tough. First time I ever played organized, organized basketball against competition. I was 18 years old playing against guys 24, 25 years old. I wasn't ready. But I had to get ready. Just like I got ready for my senior year, I had to get ready. Either that or just fall behind, but I wasn't going to fall behind because my parents were happy. They go into every game. I wanted, to make the, I wanted to make them happy. So I got in the weight room. I kept working. I kept working. I kept working. That's when I met Walt Webb. Not to big up Walt Webb, but he helped me out because he showed me things, the importance of training, taking care of your body, and my diet. I was a little chubby. I was a little chubby. And, and, and he helped me out with my diet. We slimmed down a little bit. Now that helped me out on the court. It gave me more confidence. Because when you look in the mirror, you feel like, man, I'm working, but I don't see the results. So you got to take the next step. You got to take one step, and that step leads to another one. So he helped me out with that. That's why I'm here today. Because I'm three years in the league, and I said, I got to go back to where I started at. I got to work with Walt Webb to get me to that next level. So that's when I made the decision again. Let me step up my training. Luckily, he had enough time. He gave me enough time every single day. We would go two times a day. I stayed in Virginia all summer. I never went home. But it paid off. So we always talk about this upset game and we talk about that championship we won my senior year. I don't think that game was won that night. I think it was the days before that that I put in. And I, I don't like talking about myself as a hard worker, but that's the only thing I can accredit it to. That and God, that that day was meant to happen because I put the work in and God was on my side. So training is very important. Training is very important. That's just from the basketball side. Now, if y'all want to talk about other things other than basketball, I'm here to talk about that too because if this ball didn't bounce my way, I wouldn't be in the NBA. I still have a life to live. So you got to use this basketball just for what it's for. Just use it. Just use it. You can get out education out of it. You can travel the world. You can meet a lot of friends. You can meet a lot of great people. If I never made it to the NBA, I'll be all right. 
I went to four years college. I went traveled all across the country playing basketball. I made my parents happy. They got pictures in the living room they'll never take down. You understand? I got filmed from great games. We could talk about that forever. If I never made it to the NBA, I'll be okay. But this basketball is a very, very good opportunity to make your parents happy, get a free education, discipline yourself. You can self-check yourself. When you get a little older, if you're shot not right, you gotta put yourself back in the gym. That's responsibility on your part. Your parents can't, that's not, that's not taking out the trash. That's not washing dishes. That takes you from boy to a man. That's why I always say Norfolk State took me from a young man to, I mean, a boy and to a man because I had to make decisions with the whole college atmosphere, keeping my grades up tight, being sharp on my game. And even when I thought I was sharp and it wasn't sharp enough, I had to sharpen it some more. All that I had to do on my own. I'm not saying I had to do it all on my own, but I had decisions to make, and I think, I wanna say, I made a couple right decisions. So, that's basically my story, as far as going into college. I mean, we can talk about how I got to the NBA. That wasn't sweet as well. So we had that great game, and everybody said, well, it was just one game. I said, man, when y'all gonna give me a break? I had a great game. I feel like I'm, 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 at, the top of my, I'm at the top of my basketball career. I'm on a high. My parents are happy. I always talk about my parents because I love my parents. They're the greatest parents I've ever had. They're the only parents I've ever had. So, 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 so they happy. I'm like, man. So finally, I get, I, I, get to, I get to the end of my college career. We're sitting there. We got to make a decision. I'm not going to school no more. I kind of want to make a little money playing basketball, but still, I have people doubt me. So there's 30, how many teams in the NBA? Anybody know? 30 teams. I worked out for 20 teams in the NBA. Usually guys work out for six teams, maybe eight. I worked out for 20 teams in the NBA and did all three combines. So considering, I pretty much worked out for every team in the NBA. Just to go 11 picks from the end of the draft. So it doesn't mean that because you do all you need to do, you do all the right things, it'll still work out. No, I'm not here to tell you that. You're still gonna have doubters, you're still gonna have some people that say, maybe it's not the realest thing ever. But I did all that work to get my name called in the 49th pick almost at midnight when everybody else was partying that their name was already called. So I'm sitting there sweating, but I still have my parents next to me and they ain't mine. They were still smiling, so I was happy. You know so all that work that I put in, I say I felt like I put in, as high as I felt I was, I was still brought down. I still had to get back to the, to the training part. I still, I still had to make my way onto the team. I still had to prove people wrong. I had to go in 20 gyms. I had to let people know, listen, this is the real thing, you know? This is what I have to offer. And when I sat down that night, I was totally comfortable sitting in front of that TV because I felt like my name should be called. And if it wasn't, I did all I could do. I couldn't do no more. So that was, that was my road to the NBA. Um, that was my road to the NBA. That was my road to the NBA. NBA success story and Slam City's very own Kyle O'Quinn will be at the first two weeks of camp. The first 100 kids will receive a free t-shirt in addition to individual time with Kyle. Visit us online at slamcitymanagement.com or contact Coach Walter Reb directly at 210-669-9813 or email at scmgweb at gmail.com for any additional questions or information.